死は弱者への恩恵よ全てを征服する日も近いこの子の方向を聞いたから私に挑戦するかどうかを決めなさいラングリッサー Hey guys, welcome back to Langry's and News from the future. It is 2024 and February when making this video. And yup, and very earlier, Happy Chinese New Year or Happy Lunar New Year for all. Well, um, Chinese New Year celebrating folks around the world. So on this part of video, watch to the end for the translations. I've done build and guide I've done for you guys. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Let's get started. So what you're looking at right now is um, what was posted last year after slightly a month before after the anniversary about the remaking or upgrading for the tree SR. Female characters, accordingly, they are according to rank is Empress Melda, wife of Ella Muller, Fana, and the last but not least, one of my favorite waifu, Farrah Quiz. And well, apparently, as you can see from the voting from on the CN server, Empress Melda apparently won them all. So with a whopping almost three times. Oh, sorry. In first place is Empress Melda, followed by Farquaad, and the third place is Vana. And after almost half a year, we finally have a remake. And to everyone's surprise, that instead of an SP hero, they'll make into a new type of. Super rare hero. It is known as featuring. This is not an SR, not an SSR or SP. This is the first Langrisa LLR hero, or should I say heroine? And LLR refers to Lang Le Legend, a Langrisa Legend rare hero. So yep, and featuring her new. Upgraded revamp form. She is known as Sovereign of Ice Abyss. Bingyuan Ling Yuzhe. So yep, she is voiced by none other than Ao Takahashi, son of Shai's mistress, Ao Takahashi, and she's previously the same Seiyu who voiced the original Imelda for the language mobile and. Just a showcase. So this is her LLR art, and yup, I know what you guys are looking forward to. So oops, with a slip of my hands, of should I say my fingers? Zoom. So this is definitely a new design. I guess I like a lot about the art. The design and she is definitely the move that you got, got um, <clears throat> you guys will definitely like. Some backstory: she came from the door of the other side, known as the Eye Abyssal Queen. She hold the power of extreme coldness, and she also sit on. The army of ice dragons and is known as undefeated warriors. However, all this code name or all this name that she gained is just but a memory when all her fragments or clone that she has sent to the other world, but a part of their memories. When she sent them to dominate other worlds, and last but not least, from herself, she said, "A、uh, quote from her, which we might be able to hear from her voice pack later on. Don't worry, I will let the coldness from the ice abyssal 
to let you feel to let you not feel the end of your life the pain that you're gonna suffer from the end of your life so okay she has a voice pack here which we will be showcasing to you guys so hey before we go to here okay so some of you might be interested to know who mrs aotaka she has previously voice heard Okay, the following are two of her, not of her many characters she had voiced. So one of one characters on the left is Minami K. She voiced one of the characters known as Rico, and on the right is Dead Alive, the characters known as Kusakabe. And surprisingly, looking at these two characters, um, they definitely look very young. And when you guys look back and click on your Imelda characters um, her voice actually sounds like well the typical sexy Onechan or in some case M-I-L-F <clears throat> so yep and FYI I know her name is just um well fans call uh, her actual name is Imelda we gave her Empress or Queen Imelda as an honorific because of all the Weird SMS SM stuff she done to the other characters. Yep. And some linkage of her characters with other characters is just only in Milda. So on the far dimension of another another side. Imelda make use of the extreme corners power. To win a seat in after breaking through a tunnel from the power of chaos. However, her greed to conquer does not end here, so she used some of her power and make into multiple fragments to send them across different worlds or dimensions to where, wherever they reach to conquer or to leave down her ice abyssal conqueror's name or sovereign, sovereign of ice empress sorry the sovereign of ice abyss <coughs> however except for one that actually live in the great land of El Silea, uh, uh, elite or El Silea, the from the world of Langriza Two, which is the M Imelda that lived there. Apparently, she is the one that is a very special being that lived at the world. So sorry, um, because it's a uh, it's not easy to do translation. So get a bit of muffling but long story short is that this ice we call it ice Imelda that you guys are looking at right now apparently is known as the origin of all Imelda so she has been fighting her way at either her world or different worlds and she managed to conquer the place she has been to however she is not just satisfied to just um, stop there she wants to be the conqueror of all dimensions and letting everyone to know her name and however i guess the only one that fails is emilda because not only did emilda from the language 2 uh, did not become a conqueror of all herself she worked for the empire rega empire under bernhardt and not to mention, secondly, she lose to Elwin's party and end her life by freezing herself. So, yep. This doesn't sound good in a way. And this is the chibi art. Again, it's done by Granda Curry, Mao Xiao Tu Liana. 
So yeah, before we finally go to move on to talk about her talent faction skills, how she's fan Apex, etc. Let us hear how she sounds in her voice pack. And again, gotta mention she is in this form not known as Imelda, however, she is known as the Sovereign of Ice Abyss. S O I A. Oh, well, if you fans like, you can just call her Ice and Milda. So, right here we go. Okay, not too loud. Okay, so what she's saying is the transgressor or transpasser who has the gut to Come and meet me, I give you two options. One, die here right now beautifully, or show me any value that you can be of use to me. So, yep, let us listen again. So, she's definitely the Empress. Oops, sorry. Yeah, let me do the adjustment again. So, okay, let's listen it one last time. Okay, so for all of you M guys out there, um, you can just imagine that she is currently saying this while holding on to Ice Whip and you could be expecting her to whip you with her hard, cold, cold harsh words and whacking you at the same time with her cold abyssal whip. So right, last but not least, let's appreciate her artwork again. So with a slip of my arms. And now we'll be going to the second part featuring skills, talent, faction, and discussion about how she fares in the current meta. Alright, well, welcome back to the part 2 featuring the Sovereign of Ice Abyss aka Ice Imelda. So, oops, and I forgot to mention that. A very, very great thanks to information shared and provided by the language of mobile app, Mong Hong and Soyu. And now, let us really get started. So, K. Okay. Voice by Mrs. Ao Takahashi and character's recommendations. So oh, she is from the three factions. Empire Strategies and Collab Factions, aka the Dimensional Faction. So watch to the end for the translations I've done for you guys and also pictures showcasing the current meta recommended build for the characters. So the reason you might be asking is why she is having um, the Dimensional or collab factions the reason is as simple as the backstory says she is from an another world or dimensions that um the email does that fans know about from language the tools are actually part of a fragment that is um created from her powers and that she is the original Imelda. and of course you will be able to get or check out more backstories when you manage to summon her characters 
and check out her Lang Languiza Lag Legacy stories. So, Sovereign of I uh, Ice Abyss, SOIA, rank 6, rarity is known as Languiza Legend Rare LLR. And she's currently and uh, still in the famous meta factions because um she has from Empire, which um she's able to receive it from SP Bernhardt. And probably SP Leon if he's still in the meta. Um then provide um next is strategy, so strategy, the current famous strategy is to 3C from Grand Shu. Then last but not least. Collect factions, you will be able to receive it from the Awakeners. They are definitely part of a meta in this S Apex S17 in the CN server. And at the end, we'll be discussing about her current power level and how she fell in the Apex. So, her talent, known as the Queen of Ice Abyss or Queen of Ice Abyssal. So the effect are as follow. Number one, increase damage deal by 25%. Number two, unit will not take close combat penalty. Three, once you end your turn, you can choose two allies dealing 0.1 times magic damage to them and apply for two turns chain whip effect so the chain whip is taken from the original Imelda talent effect however this time around you'll be able to target allies instead so chain whip will provide the following effect it will greatly first it will in greatly increase so it will just increase offensive stats for your target second this effect cannot be dispelled Third, upon casting these skills, it will enter a CD of two turns before you can recast again. So that's it for the effect. Later on, we'll be breaking down um, exactly how much stats it will increase and what it does. Then number four, upon initiating and dealing damage, you will deal debuff effect to enemies known as Bone Chilling. Bone Chilling has the following effects. First, it cannot be immune nor dispel. Second, when you get the debuff again within the debuff turn effect, you will gain the debuff frozen again uh, instead. Third, frozen effect. Enemies with the debuff when fighting against Sovereign will have their stats, including HP, reduced by 20% for two turns. Number five, when enemies with bone chilling debuff dies, reduce all skill CD you had by two turns. So this is pretty great. So after going through, she has an inbuilt of damage increment of 25%. That's pretty cool. And not to mention, despite being a mage, she will not be taking close combat penalty. That's pretty cool. Then, okay, she still gained her original Imelda ability of whipping your allies and getting them having stats increment. Uh, however, that is more of a taken from her 3C, Imelda's 3C, that's pretty cool. Then the effect cannot be dispelled. Then not to mention, when you manage to deal damage to enemies, you cast debuff to them. That cannot be immune or dispel. And once you get to the second stage, so the debuff has two types, the first stage and second. First stage is bone chilling which I'm going to break down to you in a while. Then second is Frozen. So enemy with the debuff when fighting against Ice and Melda will have the stats reduced by 20% for two turn excluding HP. That's pretty cool because this will greatly increase the survivability of Ice and Melda. 
And not to mention, last but not least, the last part, enemies with bone chilling debuff when they die, reduce all skill CD you had by two turns. This is a very great um, generic effect because there is no restrictions. As long as enemy with the debuff dies, your skills will be reduced by two turns. This means that first, it is not restricted to enemies that has to be killed by Ice and Milda. As long as they die, be it your allies kill them or they are death by some fixed damage, debuff, etc. As long as the enemy with that debuff dies, your skills will be reduced by two turns and this means there's a high chance by now you should understand she do not need to play the enchantment clock. So, all right, breaking down to chain whip effect. The type is a support. It has a CD of two turns. The range is five blocks. So it's not a global skill. So um, if you want to cast the skills, your allies have to stay five blocks within your range. The type, the AOE type is single target support skills. So chain whip effect are as follows. Number one, deal 0 0.1 times damage to two allies. Number two, increase 10% for the following effect. So first being increase damage deal, second fixed damage deal, third crit rate, fourth crit damage deal. Fifth, attack and intelligence, and six, skill. So you increase ten percent. The following six, um, stuff will have ten percent increment. So this is kind of like a lower tier or generic tier for the three C of the original in Milda, which we will be going through again during the demo play. But 10% is great because 10% will allow you to stack with other items or other abilities because um, other generic items ability is going to like do weapon increment that will give you like 20% so they will not overwrite. They can be stacked together. This is pretty cool. Second is the frozen effect. So if the enemies get two times your bone chilling debuff they will receive a frozen effect frozen effect as follow cause enemy to not be able to take an action for one turn so this is similar to so this is basically categorized as stun so if you guys have followed me by now so this means that in order to counteract against her you might need to wear accessories that prevent stun or you'll be casting the mass protect skills for your allies though they will not be able to be stunned or frozen by Ice Amilda's talent. Alright, moving on to the exclusive skills. So Ice Amilda is kind of cool. She has both single target and AoE skills. Okay, exclusive skill one is a single target skills. It is roughly translated as Rising Royal Grip. It is a 2C skills, has a CD of 2 turns. The range is 2 blocks, kind of low. And the AoE type is Magical Single Target. The effect are as follow. Number 1, attack and do 1.6 times damage to an enemy. Number 2, if the target has chilling bone debuff, you will attack first. Number three, close combat soldiers you bring will attack together. Number four, when you attack the target, you will cast chilling bone debuff to two enemies closest to you. So just a quick breakdown, so this is a 2C skills only, it's not even 3C, 
and is dealing 1.6 times damage that's definitely a lot then second it may or may not be good because only if the enemies has chilling bone debuff then you attack first and this means that on the previous turn you need to either splash some aoe or you got to do something first and get enemies to have chilling bone then on this turn when you use this skill then we attack first so mm, personally i'll say i can ignore the second effect first okay however third is even if you bring close combat soldiers like example any cavalry units then they will attack together with you this is not bad so however um this do not provide ignore close combat penalty in case you're wondering yep then fourth is I think the fourth effect is the coolest because if you kill the enemy target, the effect states you will cast Chilling Bone debuff to two enemies closest to you. And this effect saying two enemies closest, there is no limit to range. Whichever closest enemies they are to you in the map, this is a very similar effect to SP. Almeida's talent. So when she add turn, the closest two enemies in the map will receive random debuff from her. So this is the same as that. So this is pretty cool and awesome. However, to further prove this theory, we will be showcasing it during the demo play. If the map um, is able to allow us to showcase it to the best. Okay exclusive skill 2 it's so again on this part of the video we'll be only going through exclusive 3c skills only only on the demo play we'll be showcasing all the skills she possessed okay exclusive skill 2 is known as extreme ice change ice chain is a 1c skill has a cd of 4 the range is 4 blocks the aoe type is magical AOE and I gotta personally I gotta group it as magical AOE and also support skills and not to mention it's a act against skills so yep that's pretty cool so magical AOE AA okay the effect are as follow number one <laughs> choose a target on the field and do 0.1 time AOE damage to it. And then choose one of the following position shifting effect. The first effect is known as exceeding approach. The effect are as follow. First, pull yourself to the side of the target. This effect cannot be immune when position shift movement method is treat or treated as flying. Meaning when you cast the skills and you try to pull yourself to the enemy, the method is treated as flying. Meaning if there is any trees or pillars blocking, you should be able to fly through or pass through them. So, yep unless um it is the actual enemy obstructions <laughs> so if not um most of the terrain that usually will obstruct things like cavalry or land units you should be able to pass through them so this is basically like a hook that is from lost um lost term that's taken from it second is known as co pull the effect is very straightforward pull the target enemy to your side or pull the target to your side sorry just target don't have to be enemies it can be allies or your enemies so this is pretty cool so this is a skill that allows you to target both enemies and allies alike so this is a very convenient or if not very efficient skills Okay, so these are the following options you get to choose. Second, so number two, after using the skills, the buff turn you had will not be reduced. 
then you will be able to move three blocks and attack again so it's pretty cool um the downside is that you need to do 0 0.1 times damage be your allies or enemies uh, however um it's only 0 0.1 time it's not a lot some pros i'm gonna pro side i'm gonna think as making use of the 0 0.1 times damage to break enemies items effect of like last right or any items that requires enemies to be at 100% HP, that is not too bad. <clears throat> then for the plus combo, um, beat enemy, so it can be a double edged sword, beat enemy or allies. So if you have characters like Rose and Seals casting the crystal healing already, if you spam this 0 0.1 times damage to your allies, uh, it's not going to be. A very bad thing because after whacking them with 0 0.1 times damage they're gonna recover more HP than the damage you're dealing to them then last but not three last but not least number three after using the skills the CD of the skills will become fortunes and last but not least we are coming to the tree C the effect is known as so apparently a great news to you guys she has two three c yeah this means you get to spam two types of skills that's pretty cool so three c the first three c as you can see here is known as domination of ice abyss or rule of the ice abyss as a cd of four the range is six blocks the AoE type is magical straight line. So if you hear straight line, yep, you got it right. It's a three by six straight line. That's pretty cool. And the effect I follow, you have both passive and active. Passive I follow. Number one, immune to the damage caused by your talent effect, chain whip to yourself only. Number two, upon Casting your talent effect increase your attack and intelligence by 20% for two turns. Okay, so this is a a pretty cool passive skills because um basically you can just ignore the 0 0.1 times damage that you'll be dealing to yourself because you'll be taking none. Not to mention that um a chain whip at the base provide a 10% attack intelligence increment then to top it with a passive another 20% for two turns this is basically like a great affection buff for her offensive stats so this is pretty cool yeah nothing to lose and this is definitely a very great great plus there's only pros no cons here then two active skills the active eyes follow number one attack and deal 0 0.3 times AoE damage to enemies in three straight lines. Number two, teleport you and any allies with chain whip effect within three blocks distance to the furthest block area you can reach. Number three, at the same time, randomly Cause the blocks that you have passed through that are empty to gain terrain effect known as ice peeler for one turn. So ice peeler effect are as follow. So ice peeler is a terrain effect. So first when enemy unit pass through the ice pillar area after moving and after they end their turn they will receive the following debuff effect one they will take 1.5 times fixed damage based on the caster intelligence this effect cannot be immune 
Meaning even if you get items like braces, you will still get to take the 1.5 times damage. Second, bone chilling. So Ice Pillar will have bone chilling and till now we have not mentioned what bone chilling debuff do, so it is mentioned here. Bone chilling when non-flying enemy unit move on the terrain, it will cause them an additional movements, movement speed if they try to cross the path. Okay, number four, after using these skills, it will be transformed to Co Abyss Ice Prison or Co Abyssal Ice Prison. Okay, so before we move on to the second 3C skills, so as you can see, so this is a straight out 3 by 6 times AOE skills and it gives you teleportation ability so any allies with chain whip effect that you have cast on if there are three blocks around you upon ca casting these skills you you and your allies will be teleport to the furthest end of the area that you can reach so this is pretty cool um, especially if you try to bring characters like tank with you and also characters like um, that has two life resurrection like Zerita 2.0 even if you teleport them there if enemies try to kill kill them um, they'll definitely survive and they can do some oppressive actions press on against the enemy the next turn so this is pretty cool then not to mention at the same time the area that you have passed through if they're not preoccupied with any other terrain or it's like a flatland that is empty they will random not all terrain however it's not all blocks random selected blocks will gain the ice pillar effect so ice pillars will cause fixed damage upon any enemy unit that pass through it then if the enemy is non-flying unit if they try to pass on pass through the terrain uh, it will cause them additional movement speed so this will greatly allows you to suppress enemy at, at the same time um, reducing their chance to do any um, oppressive actions against you because um, they got to recalibrate what they got to do because of the movement speed reduction etc that have passed on the terrain and okay, moving on to the second part, Co Abyss Ice Prison. The CD is now, the range is self, the AoE type is magical tree blocks. Again, it have both passive and active, and the passive is repeated. So some of you might think it's very weird and bored that it repeat again. However, uh, I, I'll say this is a very good thing because um, unlike the previous, uh, the two banners ago, um, like, the heroine Patricia, um, sorry Patricia, because um, her three C is a trans, uh, is also a transformation three C ability. The first is a support that has um, some passive in it, if I'm not wrong. However, after transforming to the second effect, um, she has no longer having the receiving the passive support. So it's not a very great um, 3C overall because you definitely got to spam and use up everything within the time frame. However, for Ice and Milda, this is pretty cool that um, even after transforming, you still gain the, pass the following passive effect. So number one, immune to the damage caused by talent effect, chain whip to yourself. And second, upon casting your talent effect, increase your attack and intelligence by 20% for two turns. So this is still pretty cool that the passive effect are still being retained despite the trees is being transformed. Okay, so the active skills effect are as follow. Number one, deals 0.36 times AOE damage to enemies around you. Number two, at the edge of the skill range, Create an ice pillar terrain that lasts for one turn with the following effect. 
So the criteria is if enemy unit pass through it after moving and after the end of their turn, they receive the following debuff effect. First, receive 1.5 times fixed damage based on caster's intelligence. This effect cannot be immune. Second, bone chilling. When non-flying enemy units move on the terrain, it will cause them an additional movement speed. Number three, after casting these skills, obtain the command aura effect for two turns, known as Co Abyssal Ice Prison. So um, the skill is supposed to be known as Co Abyss Ice Prison. However, to not make um, not to confuse you guys, I changed from Co Abyss to Co Abyssal Ice Prison, so you guys will know this is um, for the command aura effect. So in case you guys are wondering that I have did some error in translations. So this command aura effect will provide you the following abilities. First, enemies three blocks around you cannot trigger act again effect. A effect. So it's pretty cool. So if enemies like um Zarita 2.0 uh, the new cavalry unit and also characters like Gintama if you, have, you happen to queue an allies especially for Kintoki, Ken, uh, Kintama Kintoki if you happen to cast AoE and you queue his allies around him and if he's staying three blocks around you his egg again will not be able to trigger so in return it increase your survivability okay number four after using these skills change it back to domination of the ice abyss or rule of the ice abyss so um the first three c and second three c are pretty similar in terms of effect however the great things about the second form of the tree is that when you cast this AOE skills at an edge, meaning the last block, correct me if I'm wrong, it refers to the last block of your damage area, it will create another ice pillar, so you're giving you more um, terrain effect to jam the enemies, and in return, it will cause them to be able to gain the debuff. From chilling bone to frozen effect as fast as possible and this is gonna be a very great killing spree for your team against the enemy so yeah it's pretty cool and the first three c effect one great combos you guys can or you might have already think of is to combine this three c ability effect with Character like Ashen or Ashen, um, the princess of Cerberic, the one that is riding on Pegasus, um, giving you some description. So we know that Ashen has uh, a death blow survivability, so upon receiving death blow, she will be resurrected with 50%, 30% or 50% of HP. That's pretty cool. So all we need to do is use Ice Imelda to cast Chain Whip to Ashen on the first turn or even on the same turn then we will be casting the Tree C to teleport her together with you to the enemy side and do damage, freeze them and if So once you manage to use the first part, the domination of Ice Abyss, to rush over to enemies, you have two um, options. So and the same for the enemy. So first, enemies will try to kill off Ashen, and if it, they do not have characters like Zerida 2.0, even if they try to kill 
Ashen, Ashen will be resurrect. Uh, she will be revived, and at this time round, you will have. You'll be the one to take the offensive offensive streak. You can choose either one to either heal yourself act again to uh, can either heal yourself or go for the attack to stun the enemy or two you can choose to act again ice Imelda. so of course in return um either one of you may or might die however um in return if you manage to survive either one of you the next following turn you'll be able to either kill off one of the enemies you need or you might be able to freeze more than one enemy unit or also kill them at the same time so this is a pretty, pretty cool combo of options if you manage to do it so what did you guys think leave it down in the comment section below and thank you guys for watching this is coming remember to like and subscribe if you like this video and see you guys on the demo play and see ya Whoops, and so yep, um, before I forgot, apparently I forget about it, sorry, wait. so um, this is an extension record after the, after the thing, and so in case you guys are wondering, yes, Eyes Imelda, aka LLR Imelda, she is a top tier heroine, or should I say she's group as of the current meta as a tier one to tier zero hero because of her ability to support ability to go very offensive against enemies ability to slow enemy freeze enemy and allows herself to survive from even the strongest of foes damage without um re needing the ability to revive herself so she's definitely very strong in the apex she is not just strong in pvp but also pve because of the introduction of llr in milda your weekend joint battle will be done as fast as within a minute or two in turn one and if i can i'll do i'll take a recording and showcase to you guys and with that officially end and next to the translation I've done for you guys and also the building, the uh, um, weapon building for her characters. Thank you and bye bye.